Hey everyone, JC here. Today I'm going to show you how to convert a camera tripod into a launch pad. The process is fairly simple and just requires a few parts and tools. Here's a list of the items we need. First of all, a tripod. In this case, I just have the quick release plate. Now the important thing about it is this screw. If you don't have a quick release plate, you just have a tripod with a screw in it, that's fine. Okay, we're going to screw the coupler nut to this. Okay, the important thing is the size. In this case, this is a one quarter inch by 20. Okay, we're going to use that size. The coupler nut has to match that. This is a coupler nut. It's a 7 eighths of an inch long. It's going to be used as our launch rod holder. Okay, then we need a thumb screw. This is a 1024 thumb screw. It's going to screw into a hole we're going to drill and it's going to hold the rod in place. We need a drill bit, in this case, 5 30 seconds or number 25. Then we're going to use to drill a hole in our coupler nut. And we need a tap, okay, a 1024 tap that matches the thumb screw. And that's going to be used to put threads in the hole we drill. Tap holder, obviously for holding the tap while we're doing the thread cutting. We need a pen to mark where we're going to mark, put the hole. We need a ruler for some measurements. And we need a hammer and a punch because we're going to dimple the coupler nut to show where we want to put this hole. And then we need a vise and a drill or a drill press to put in there. So let's get started. The first thing we need to do is determine where we want to drill the hole. So we want to figure out how far is this going to project into the coupler nut. Measure this, it's just between 3 16 and a quarter. That's for ease of use, we'll just call it a quarter. So a quarter, so it's going to project up in here a quarter of an inch. Okay, and so we want to use that free space. So the amount of free space we're going to have is going to be 7 eighths of an inch minus a quarter of an inch, which is going to be 5 eighths. Okay, and we want to drill it halfway through that empty space. So that's going to be 5 sixteenths of an inch. So we want to measure down from one end, 5 sixteenths of an inch. Okay, that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now I'll double check, always double check. I'm a little long. That's really supposed to be right there. Now we'll triple check. Yep, five sixteenths of an inch on the nose. Okay, so that's where we want to drill our hole. Okay, so let's get out to the garage and get drilling. Okay, here we are out in the garage. We have our vise. We have our coupler nut. We have our hammer and our punch. So let's get our nut mounted inside our vise here. Try and get it as level as possible. And square. Not easy because you have little edges to work with. Okay. Don't crank it down really tight. Remember, it's not super hard and metal. Okay, so we're going to take our punch. We're going to put it on our marked ink spot here. And I don't know if you can see, but there's a little dimple right there. Okay. So that's where we want to drill. So let's put it back in there. See, I didn't put it in there real tight. So I didn't want to take a chance of deforming anything. Let's put it in there nice and snug. Okay, there we go. I've already put the drill bit in the drill. There. Okay. And I've already put the tap handle, the tap in the tap handle. Alright, so let's go ahead. In case you're wondering why I'm using this particular drill, it has a bubble level on it, so it'll help me keep it vertical. Okay, we got it in there. Get the drill vertical. I'm going to use firm pressure, but at a medium speed.
Okay, so we're through. Now you notice I didn't use any cutting oil. That's because it's just a zinc coated alloy. All right, now I'm gonna do a little bit of a dimple on the other end because you gotta get the tap in there. Now it's not perfectly centered, but that's all, not a problem. Okay, so we got our tap. Once again, don't need to use cutting oil. Just the important thing about when you're tapping something, sorry for my hand being in the way, is to, uh, so I'm a righty, is to ensure that you back out periodically to clear the threads with the cuttings. Looks like we're through. Okay. Now we'll take our thumb screw. You can see that it uh, is all the way inside there. So we'll back that out. Now we'll do a quick test. All right, now that we have our thumb screw slash coupler nut rod holder all done, Let's give it a test, okay? So the first thing we want to do is we want to mount it onto our plate or our tripod. So just screw it on there. Uh, I would recommend if you have a shoe like this, try and get the uh, thumb screw to the side so it's a little bit easier to get to. Mine has a little, I'm not sure what you call it, maybe thumb screw. Um, a little mechanism here for Twisting it, tightening it up. All right, so we're all good there. Okay, next thing you can do is you can either put the rod on there or you can put it onto the tripod. So I'm gonna put the rod on there. This is an old rod that I have, I don't use it anymore. Oops, where is it? Um, that I replaced, because this one, you can see it's sort of rusty. I replaced it with a stainless steel one. This one I got from Home Depot for, I think, four bucks. So let's get in here. Just bottom it out in the coupler nut. Tighten it up. I wouldn't recommend using pliers because you might want to undo it. So you can see it's in there. It's, it's in there nice and tight. Okay, so now I'm gonna get a tripod. So here's the tripod. Yeah, there it is that this shoe fits on, this base plate fits on. So I'm gonna mount it, and then I'll show you what it looks like. Oh, I just hit the light. Okay, whoops, sorry, I'm gonna move the camera over here so you can see it. So, There's our launch rod mounted on a tripod. All you have to do is just slide your um, blast deflector plate down over the top of that, and then you're ready to go. And when you're done with it, you see it's pretty stable. It's going to obviously wiggle a little bit, but no matter what, you're going to do that because it's a four foot long rod. Now, if you don't want to use your launch pad deflector plate from what you currently have, you can use something like this. Okay, this is just a dual gang box cover for covers four outlets. Okay, just drill a 3 16 inch hole or a tiny bit bigger in here. It's a lot thicker than the blast deflector plate you get with your launch pad. 
But there, slide it down over the top. There you go. Hey everybody, we're inside again, back from the garage. A little noisy outside, very boisterous neighborhood. Okay, now that we have this, well, if we want to build more of them, how much do these things cost? Well, let's talk about it. Okay, so the thumb screws, they come in packs of four, 1024 by one half inch. Like I said, I bought them at Home Depot. Uh, that costs $1.28 for four of them. They're zinc plated. The couple of nuts, of course, they don't come in fours, they come in threes. They're also mild steel that's zinc plated. And they are $1.65. So it's less than $4 for these parts. For three of them. To make three of these. A tap costs you about five bucks or so if you don't already have one. I'm sure if you don't have a punch, that's okay. I'm sure you already have a drill bit. Any drill set's probably going to have five thirty seconds. So is it worth it? I'd say it is. You know, you can build three of these things in an hour for about 10 bucks. It'll hold a 1 8 or a 3 16 inch one. If you get a slightly larger one, and maybe you might want to get a slightly, like, get a quarter by 20 thumb screw, if you get a, uh, say, a 5 16 um, coupler nut. It would hold quarter inch rods too. I'm not sure how good it would be at holding eighth inch rods. But that's it. I hope you guys uh, get a lot out of it. If you have any questions or comments, please put them in the comments section. As always, you know, here to help. Take care.